Welcome to another episode of Xa Talk Show. Today is September 9th, Monday, 2 o'clock p.m. San Francisco time. And good morning, Zitron Crazy. Good morning, Zitron Crazy, and good morning, Bartholomew. So, Zitron Crazy is doing homework, math homework. About fx equals to x squared plus c. Okay, that's a polynomial. So, is that calculus or? Uh, okay, so what is the topic today? Topics, guys, topics. So, okay, so let's prepare these. This, this window is, is JavaScript, by the way. And uh, I might want to convert it to TypeScript. And it could be a topic today, you know, convert this script to TypeScript. So first of all, xar start command log mod. Okay, if you like to see that conversion to TypeScript, say it. So this window on the left is my Emacs commands. All my Emacs commands, you can see it there. Like down arrow, up, up arrow, right, forward, word, right, uh, backward, word, and so on. So comments, guys. What is t today's topic? Let, 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 let us see. So today's topics includes. So Bartholomew says eleven life and death of Flash. Well, I don't have that much to talk about that. Well, unless we get into started to talk about some history. Well, okay, so Flash, as you know, Flash was Macromedia Flash, Macromedia. Uh, let's type it. M-A-C-R-O-M-E-D-I-A, -E that's a company. Uh, Macromedia Flash, that's their technology, which is like today's, um, well, let's go to Wikipedia, which is like today's uh, which is like today's JavaScript plus SVG, okay, or Canvas. So there it is, Adobe Flash, okay. It was Macromedia, and Adobe bought it. Now Adobe, Macromedia, and Adobe, both companies, they are, they are the pioneer uh, of software on Apple's platform in 1990s. You know, in 1990s, there's a huge amount of pioneering software on the Apple platform. For example, drawing software like Adobe Photoshop is one of them. Uh, Freehand is one of them. Adobe Illustrator is one of, one of them. And you have Macromedia, you have uh, Macromedia, you have Fractal, which is a painting software, Fractal Paint. Uh, and uh, quite a lot, you know, many, uh, many of these pioneering software start on the Mac. Then, you know, as you know, Mac users are typically 10% of all uh, computer users. So eventually, by the late 1990s or, or early 2000s, they all switched to Windows. That is, originally, they, they, most of them, or many of them, they produce only Mac-only software in the beginning. Then they switch to, then they become both Mac and Windows, typically Mac first. You know, they are primarily Mac. Then, you know, around year 2000, they all switch to Windows. Like, Windows, Windows is their primary platform, Windows first, then Mac. Because Mac, you know, in the, in the history of Mac, Apple, uh, there's a lot of struggles. You know, around 1997, Apple is about to die. You know, bleeding, <laughs> bleeding, and uh, you know, people say Apple is gonna be sold to some microsystems and so on. But eventually, Steve Jobs came back to Apple and he revived Apple. He is really, uh, truly one of the greatest marketer and uh, innovator. So Steve Jobs came back to Apple in uh, 1998, around 1998, and he is known as the ICEO. Be why ICEO? Uh, because you know, at that time you have iMac, you have i something, i uh, 
I something something. You know, everything is I something something. iPod, yeah, I iPod. Then, so Steve Jobs became known as I CEO. The I is supposed to stand for interim CEO, but eventually he's just the CEO. You know, there's no no other guy after you know uh, actually take take place. Uh, then. Around 2008, also Steve Jobs died. Okay, so let's look at, you know, I have some articles on Steve Jobs' death. So hold on a second, let me close the door. So Steve Jobs died. Around 2008. Okay, so and let me go in to show you. So, Bartholomew, talk. And Zitron, talk. And who else is here? Talk. Type your opinions and stuff. Comments. Okay, let's search for Xali uh, Steve Jobs. You know, is that is this a topic we're going to talk about? So, because <laughs> once we begin, it's going to be endless. It's going to be 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and uh, we won't have time to do technical programming stuff. Uh, so Donald Gnuth, Steve Jobs, and the idiocy of typography. And this one, Richard Stallman on Steve Jobs' death. And this one, death of Steve Jobs versus Denise Ritchie, John McCarthy. Now those, those are the Unix philosophy idiots. Uh, and so you want to change the world. That's Steve Jobs on keyboard. Okay, I'm gonna show you each of these articles, and uh, let's also search for Steve Jobs photos. I have photos of Steve Jobs I personally took. For example, this one, this one, this one, this one. All these, these are my photos. All these, okay, except except this, uh, the the last row. Uh, here, my personal photos of Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs, 1995 to 2011. Okay, he died in 2011. Okay, so are we gonna talk about these topics? Uh, good morning, good morning. So, uh, good morning, web dog. Bartholomew says I read that Richard Stallman had a talk at Microsoft. Oh yeah. I, I'm not sure what's going on, but apparently he's giving a talk at Microsoft. He would never do that before. I, I don't know. So, you know, a lot of people are thinking something's going on. You know, maybe he got paid or, well, he always get paid. I mean, I, I think whenever Richard Stallman gives a talk, I think he get paid. But, you know, possibly there is some kind of a issue because he would, you know, normally uh, Richard Stallman would never give a talk at Microsoft, you know, and he did. Yeah, that's what they say, you know, uh, Microsoft is false now, you know, open source and free software foundation. Yeah, that's what they say, you know, it's like Mi Microsoft is now is the biggest open source or free software, uh, you know, false. Um, rather mostly open source uh, supporters because for example github I mean Microsoft bought github right but even before that Microsoft is one I mean if you count lines of code or project number of projects Microsoft actually at some point like two years ago or something Microsoft was the number one contributor to open source uh, you know, as, as, so I don't know what you guys open source fanatics, you know, some some of you, not necessarily you guys, but all the people watching my video, some of you, many of you are open source fanatics or free software fanatics. I don't know <laughs> what you guys think of it, you know, but to me, that, that just shows that how much this open source is just... Um, uh, is, is just the uh, ideology went wrong, you know, e ideology induced you know, the, all, all these problems are ideology induced, you know, they are not good. They are doing uh, nobody good, except they are doing Microsoft good, 
they are doing Google good, they are doing Facebook good, they are doing uh, you know all these evil companies good. Uh, <laughs> okay, I gotta I gotta show that one. I'm gonna lick Zchan's foot if I'm, Microsoft is going false. <laughs> Okay, didn't you hear? Okay, so yeah, that's about Microsoft. You know, that that's, so my general, that's my, you know, that to me is a, a proof, uh, uh, you know, that how open source is, uh, the all the open source is just uh, no good. Okay, it's, uh, okay, let's switch topic. Let's not talk about open source. Well, it's an inevitability. So WebDoc says, I agree with you, so open source is welfare for F-A-A-N-G, what does that stand for? And uh, S-A-A-S startups, what does that stand for? So type it. So uh, let's, you know, I, 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 like, I would like to uh, do some technical stuff, you know, <laughs> like programming, instead of, instead of talking about this, uh, you know, philosophy, I mean, kind of thing random chat oh my god Andre is here again Andre says can I do a logarithmic frequency spectrum on p5js what, what, what's the deal Andre like you have to say okay I mean what do you want like like are you are you are you doing are you uh, did you write that what's the reason you want me to talk about that and did it, did you hear last time you mentioned that I talked about it for a few minutes because I, and I said I don't know nothing about it. I went to the website. I don't know nothing about uh, about that you know frequency spectrum JavaScript project. It, it looks nice, but I don't know nothing about it. What what do you want me to talk about it? What, what's the deal with that? Okay, so let's go back to the flash. Okay, uh, let's let's talk. Let's go back to flash. Okay, Adobe Flash. So I was saying, you know, Apple in the nineteen nineties, many great software began on the Apple platform. <laughs> uh, you know, so then Adobe bought it. You know, things change. Like all these companies, you if you lived long enough you can observe their history you know like like this company was good but now it's bad or that company was bad it did something evil extremely bad everyone knows and now it becomes good but the thing is you see the younger generation they don't know like you you know you you saw it like yesterday this company is so bad but the young people they are saying oh you know you should support company x because they are so great this or that uh, but if you lived long enough, you know that's and there's nothing, almost nothing you can do because you know uh, that's that's what happens in society. That's that's in general the situation of humanity. Okay, so this article is about typography. Now I hate typography. Uh, I'm I'm not sure I want to talk about this topic because this topic is gonna be <laughs> thirty minutes at least. So you have typography, and you have you have how the tech Gnuth tech sucks donkey ass. I, well, I'm not going to talk about this. Let's talk about Richard Stallman. Okay, so let, let me finish these subjects quickly. So Richard Stallman on Steve Jobs' dead, death. So he says, "I'm not glad he's dead, but I'm glad he's gone." So this is around 2011. When this happened, you know, Steve Jobs, he's a, you know, very famous, popular guy, and he has a lot of supporters, even, even in the free software. I mean, it, well, yes, at least some in the free software community and also a lot in open source because Steve Jobs he, I mean, as far as I mean, he did. A, he's a truly, a, truly a one of the greatest innovator. Okay, whatever you want to say 
about other aspects. But it, one thing for sure is that he's truly one of the greatest innovator. Uh, he introduced, especially in Apple in the early days, he introduced lots of things into the population. You know, for example, mouse, he popular, popularized it. For example, uh, music, you know, digital music, he made it legal. I mean, he, he, he made it so that it's legal. It, it, he made digital music popular, right? Be, be, yes, because around early 2000s, people are parroting music you know they they rip you know there's a term rip from cds you buy cd you rip it use uh you know you you share it with your friends and so he see it he's he steve jobs see this is a problem that a social problem that it can be solved you know like nobody all these uh music companies they are not selling digital copies they are they are selling cds and when people are pirating all over and these companies' behavior, typically, they are trying to sue you, you know, doing all kind of that kind of thing. And Steve Jobs sees that, you know, this is, this is not right. You know, society as technology progresses, you know, there is actually, we need to do something. So he did, he made digital music, the selling di of digital music popular, you know. It's, you know, you, you have, like, he's a enter entrepreneur like you have to go out and do it you know you know you have to talk to the uh the people of uh, the music companies you know you have to make them you know open a company and do it and start to you know and talk about then there's a uh, law you know legality legal issues you have to solve those issues so Steve Jobs did that and his iPod of course the iPod the first uh mainstream music player becomes very popular so that's all steve jobs and before you know you have usb you have firewire you have cd on a pc uh usb cd you have uh dvd also uh you have wireless also they are all they all began on the apple you know on the apple uh, platform a apple's computers on the pc on the other on the other hand, on the PC t Windows, typically they wait, they wait and, and see. You know, it's usually typically af after Apple, you know, made it, you know, out of the box on the Mac, you know, a CD player on the Mac or USB, you know, on the Mac or all these other things, you know, or wireless on the Mac or, or uh, wireless Wi-Fi on the Mac, you know, it's all first on the Mac. Then you typically after two years, at least a minimum of two years, then it becomes, you know, then it appears on the PC, you know, Windows, then it becomes like uh, popular. And same thing for mouse, for GUI, it's all Apple. Uh, yeah, so Apple has tremendous uh, innovation. And that is also why I use Apple is my main machine from 1990s up to 2008 or so, 2011, 2009, something like that. And uh, why do I use a Mac? Because, you know, in, in my first Mac is 1992, Mac, Mac 2 SI. Mac 2 SI, okay. I have an article on my website, but um, uh, for example, you can see here. So I guess today is just random chat then, random chat. Let's see. Uh, so yeah, uh, Andre, I don't know what's your issue. You know, you <laughs> you you are wasting your time. Uh, let's see if I have. Anyway, let, let's let me finish about. So this is Mac 2 SI. This is uh, this came out in 1990. Now I bought my first computer with my own money in 1992. I think it's 1992. Uh, so that's what I have. Mac 2 SI. You have. Uh, it's running Mac OS Classic. You know, System 6.0. And. Uh, let me tell you what's uh, memory. Memory is one megabyte. Okay, that's you know that's <laughs> that's a lot. You know back then, one megabyte of memory, and the CPU is Motorola sixty-eight thirty. 
uh, 20 megahertz imagine that today you have 2 gigahertz 3 gigahertz so the CPU is 20 megahertz 1 megabyte RAM and uh, the hard disk I think it's uh, 20 megabyte 20 megabyte hard, hard disk 40 megabyte okay 40 megabyte hard disk hard drive so that's Mac 2 SI that's my first computer okay so let's go back to Richard Stallman on Steve Jobs death so Steve Jobs many people respect then Richard Stallman says you know he he posts this on his own um, blog you know richstallman.org he says Steve Jobs the pioneer of computer as a jail mate cool <laughs> designed to serve designed to serve a fools from their freedom has died as Chicago mayor Harold Washington said of a of the corrupt former mayor daily I'm not glad he's dead but I'm glad he's gone nobody deserved to have to die not jobs not mr. Beal not even people guilty of bigger evils than theirs but we all deserve the end of jobs malign influence on people's computing unfortunately that influence continues despite his absence we can only hope his successors as they attempt to carry on his legacy will be less effective now this is uh, from Richard Stallman what a fuck you know uh, so anyway so Richard Stallman made this statement so at that uh, a lot time at that time a lot of free software foundation members you know meaning that people who donated you know you donate you become a member they quit you know they got angry because Richard Stallman says says this now there are many aspects to it okay uh, people become angry partly because Steve Jobs just died and they hear they, they see this Richard Stallman and they they, they, they they went crazy you know they, they cannot tolerate this behavior you know they so they, they quit you know I, there are some angry posts on, on Twitter or elsewhere they say you know you know you know I'm tearing up my free software foundation membership you know um, so but to me you know a pe people is dead you know you, you you should not change your opinion just because someone is dead okay I don't I, I'm you know as as you know I'm a schizoid so I don't I don't have much emotion you know emotional kind of thing I don't have that thing I'm rather like Mr. Data okay more logical code so when Steve Jobs dies and I see this Richard Stallman saying these things I don't think it's wrong okay yeah because you should not change your opinion just because someone died it's you know you, uh, these people emotional people they are like oh at the moment someone died you shouldn't say it you know uh, you know something like uh, maybe until later then you can say it. that that's 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 not that's that's incorrect that's that's not a uh, uh, good uh, thing uh, that's inva invalid um, uh, thinking uh, you see you, you know your opinion on someone should not change just because someone just died you know so Richard Stallman said these things I don't I don't mind but however in general Richard Stallman is just wrong you know he's just he's 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 this is his ideology doing evil showing uh, yeah I mean if we if you want to ask my judgment of Richard Stallman he's just a uh, first of all he's very honest and uh, do what he believes you know that in that sense I respect as opposed to a lot of these free software or open source fuckheads you know on one hand they sing the song of open source and free software but however they work for Apple Google Facebook and they own they own all the new Apple computers toys these fuckheads these are these are the true hypocrites these people are more evil than uh, Richard Stallman at least you know Richard Stallman is someone I believe that he you know he's just someone he went into the wrong way like totally ignorant of 
economics, ignorant of, of, of reality, you know, like e ignorant of any practical issues. He only focused on this ideology, you know, share, basically that's a, that's a, a bottom line of communism. That's what, you know, but however, he's, he's a rather, so far as I know, an honest guy, you know, because he, you know, you, he doesn't own any computers. Not, these days, not, ev not even, he doesn't even use Linux because even Linux, you have lots of problems, you know, the, lots of political issues. So, you know, in the beginning, he's for Debian Linux. You know, it's, it's strange when you look at, you know, the history of things. You know, in the beginning, you have Debian Linux, which is very pro, you know, free software. It's sanctioned by Free Software Foundation, by Richard Stallman. But then, they have quarrels, you know, they have quarrels, they have arguments every day about, oh, documentation uh, license, you know, minor details, they disagree, they fight. You know, this, this, this to me is actually the reality, the, the human nature. You know, you, you fight for your own, uh, your own political values, while on the whole, you are just fucking up everyone else. You know, just look at the Linux community, you know, Richard Stallman versus all the, uh, you know, Debian. So in the beginning, in the beginning, Richard Stallman, you know, sanctioned, approved Debian, you know, he pushes for Debian, which, you know, it's, this is good, we like, you know, I like it, you know, we should, but then there's lots of quarrels. They kicked, you know, all the, basically all the rich, all the Linux communities, they kicked out Richard Stallman because they disagree on so many things, you know, the, the many just subtle de details on licensing and stuff. And to me, okay, to me, that is, that is the reality of human nature, of uh, communism, of the sharing attitude, because in reality, you don't share a fuck, you don't share nothing. All you care is you, you just want to push your idea, your, your, you know, whatever you like, you know, Richard Stallman, or, you know, you guys, you just want to push whatever that, that, that is, you know, benefit to you. That's your, your opinion, your color, you know, whatever color you like. That's what happens. And look at today. So to me, look at today, Microsoft, uh, you know, Microsoft, Google, you know, Facebook, they are all, they are, they are, they are the people who made open source popular. In fact, they are the, they are the main contributors of open source, okay? They, it is they that put money that made open source survive. It is they. And they, and who are they? They, they have 1,000 patent lawyers suing each other, motherfucker. This Google, Facebook, and, 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 you know, Google, Facebook, Apple. Apple, the fucking Apple. 100,000 patents suing each other every day. And then you have, you know, these typical, many of my followers, the open source chanting fucks. Uh, it's all, it's all just a fuckery, okay? So, th so this is Richard Stallman. This is the story about Richard Stallman on Steve Jobs' death. Okay, so that's one story. Uh, hold on a second. Let me copy that to today's talk show. So we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna, uh, log what, what we talked today. So copy that. So close that. Then we have this Unix philosophy fuckheads. This happened in 2011 too. Okay. Uh, so, so this, so in 2011, Steve Jobs died and, uh, this, uh, Unix guy, uh, this Unix guy, what's his name? Denise Ritchie also died. Okay. Then you have this meme, you know, that went viral, like, like, you know, million, billions, millions of shares. This, this photo, this picture went viral. It says, you know, becomes a hipster, sells stolen ideas, Steve Jobs, praised by media as Jesus of computing. Then on the other side, you have inventor, invented C and Unix, uh, Denise Ritchie, ignored. So this went viral, you know, all this idiot, this Unix philosophy, you know, the Linux loving fuckheads, you know, they, 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 they love this. They, even among my friends, I've seen, you know, my friends, you know, <laughs> post this, share this, you know, what, what, you know, what are these people thinking? You know, so they are saying, okay, Steve Jobs, 
you know, he 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 is you know not for free software. He's just an innovator, okay. And he died, and he's praised by you know he's on every media, like every publication, you know, mainstream media praises him. Oh, Steve Jobs died. But meanwhile, the Denise Ritchie, you know, the one of the founder of Unix, creator of Unix, you know, he died, but there's not much media attention. Why? Do you know why? What, what, what about Michael, Michael Jackson? When he died, he, you know, all the media is, is, is 10 times, 100 times, you know, publishing about Michael Jackson's death more than Steve Jobs. And what about, let me ask you this, do you know, do you know what's the greatest mathematician that died around 2011? Do you know? Can, like, can you name one? The, 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 the Unix philosophy fuckheads, they cannot name a single one. Okay, let, let me show you. Uh, Denise Ritchie, John McCarthy, J John McCarthy also died in, in, what, uh, in what year? Um, around 2011 let's see what year 2011 indeed John McCarthy the creator of Lisp he also died in 2000, 2011 but no, nobody knows nobody knows okay what about mathematicians they, they are quite a few uh, great mathematicians who died around 2011 if you consider their work that's far more important than this fuck Denise Ritchie, okay. Uh, so who are they? For example, the fractal guy, Benoit Mandelbrot, he died. He died in, uh, in 2010, okay. Benoit Mandelbrot, the, the creator, the inventor of the fractal, far more fucking important uh, with respect to human history than the fucking Denise Ritchie, the Unix guy, okay. Who else? John McCarthy, uh, Bernard Mandelbrot, Discadra, this guy is a, a computer scientist, okay, he's a the theoretical, more of a theori theoretical computer scientist, he died in 2002, nobody knows, the fucking Unix philosophy fuckheads, they don't know, they don't know about this guy, who else, let me show examples, Harold Scott, uh, uh, this mathematician H S M, Coxter. Okay, he he's known uh, he's known by the abbreviation H S M Coxter. He's the one of the great geometer. He died in two thousand three. He lived up like uh, up ninety six years old. He you know many mathematicians <laughs> live long. So he died in two thousand three. No nobody nobody say the thing. So. So I mean, my point is, my point is, wh why are these Unix fuckheads? What made them think, you know, what what made them post this and they think they are justified? What the fuck is their mentality? You know, can can you guys, can you guys defend, you know, these Unix philosophers? What what's their problem? You know, what 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 what's their problem? Incredible. You know, to them, you know, you can see they, 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 they post this, you know, meme viral, you know, it went viral and you have a lot of comments. You can kind of tell, okay, so if I were to guess their mindset, it's like they feel, oh, they feel so wronged, you know, they feel like it's so wronged. Oh my God, Steve Jobs, you know, he didn't really do something important to humanity, <laughs> but everyone is talking about it, like, you know, memorial about Steve Jobs, but, but, but then I love this guy, Unix guy, but he died. Nobody knows. Oh my God, this is injustice. The fuck, Unix philosophy, fuckheads. So okay, that's about that. Okay, that's my rant. You know, that's my rant. So technically, this would be classified uh, as the subject matter would be the programmers culture okay this is a criti criticism of programmer culture in particular the unix people culture okay that's about that topic okay so so mandelbrot he he's the inventor of fractal uh tremendous you know tremendous this is a 
matter in, in, this is a creation in science one of the great uh, discovery in science okay fractal you know to most people when you think of fractal you think of pictures like this but they, 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 that's much deeper I mean this is part of mathematics okay this is uh, uh, chaos theory and part of chaos theory complex analysis uh, uh, and dynamical systems okay that that's the topic okay factors uh, so let me dy, dy dynamical systems complex analysis and uh, you know, and and it has far-reaching uh, consequences in the stu study of fractal. Okay, so he, you know, and besides, it's just visually spectacular. A anyway, that's uh, one of the great. I, I probably one one, probably top ten. One of the top ten greatest uh, scientific discovery in this century. Okay, fractals. Far more important critical than the unix fuck the the unix operating system fuck and c programming c c language and this is the disk jar disk jar many of you especially lispers know uh he, he's a computer scientist he uh usually theoretical and he often likes to he talks a lot and you know like a troll many people like in today's today's jargon today's um you, you you know you just you just say he's a troll okay uh this guy's this guy and hsm coxter he's a great geometer and he studies uh usually uh things like visual like polyhedron poly polyhedron polytopes uh, you know very pure pure math pure and pure math and pure geometry uh, you know so usually a lot of people like you know that uh, you might like his stuff uh, HMS HSM Coxter okay so he's a one of the greatest mathematician okay so that's about that Okay, then then some other topics. Now I'm going to read. Okay, Steve Jobs. Now here's some of the photos of Steve, Steve Jobs I took. So this is uh, 2000, 2001 in Palo Alto. You know about well, Palo Alto is about twenty minutes drive where uh, from where I live. You know this this photo is actually taken by my friend Brian Nakamoto. Uh, so you have Steve Jobs here you know I'm right there you know I'm right there and Steve Jobs talking to another guy this is Apple Palo Alto when Apple just opened a store so around 2010 that is when Apple started to open stores Apple store you know around around USA and later on around the world Apple store and also this is when you know, people are thinking all the brick and, and wall stores are closing down. You see, so Steve Jobs is a innovator because he sees differently. You know, like think different. You see, around two thousand one, the thinking is that you know the brick and wall, all the stores is gonna shut down. You know, we have digital stores instead, like Amazon. But Steve Jobs think you know instead he is gonna he is opening stores. And uh, that turns out to be successful too, you know. He, so he's, you know, he, uh, he's a genius in 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 what he does. So Steve Jobs, the uh, Palo Alto Apple Apple Store grand opening. Uh, you know, more photo. And this this is my photo. You know, I I, I took photo of him. Uh, he's talking. He's talking, Steve Jobs. The last time I saw him is around 2008. Uh, you know, I saw him on the street outside, outside of a conference, some some Apple, you know, annual Apple 
conference. And, uh, you know, I, I was outside of it and I saw him standing outside, you know, I, I didn't say hi. Uh, this is, so that's, that's the last time I saw him, 2008. So you see, these are IMAX. These are extremely popular back then. And also, it was an innovation. You know, Apple made these uh, IMAX computers. OK, so that's photos of Steve, Steve Jobs. And there's more. And uh, let me show you some more. OK, so. So this is Steve Jobs, just about few months before he died. This is Steve Jobs. Uh, oh, this is Steve Jobs in 2007. You know, he looks, he don't look, he doesn't look good. You know, he's look, he looks like that. Let me play it. So you know, by by this time, two thousand seven, he's pretty thin. He's already you know, uh, uh, you know, gaunt. How, how you say that word? Gaunt. Yes, Dixtra. This uh, Dixtra is a guy who said you know who made popular the article. Go to considered harmful. Yeah. Uh, Steve Jobs. Anyway, so, okay, let's close that. Mac to SI, close that. Uh, so you want to change the word. Okay, let me read the comments and let's see what people say. Comments, 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 guys, comments. And how long we've been talking about today? So we've been talking, uh, what? doesn't say what oh shit this is the wrong I need to go to yeah okay so look at here 42 minutes software as a service okay and uh, coding trend, whatever. Congratulations on your first stream troll. <laughs> Flashbad, SPAS, good. What is SPAS? Oh, uh, SAAS. That stands for Software as a Service. And uh, FAANG stands for Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google. Okay. The fan okay the fan of the evil uh, flash bad SPAS good so what is SPAS <laughs> all these acronyms SPAS still not good web assembly is better they are both bad I hope web assembly never takes off uh, may explain why there is already enough bloat delivered through my browser so what's your solution to that andrew says can you make a youtube video about shut up no i cannot make a video about p5js <laughs> I, I don't know what's your uh issue p5js so webdog says Native applications, no electron either, just real programs that execute real assembly. Uh, so, so Batham, you says you should make me moderator. <laughs> okay, uh, well, I could. Let's hold, hold on a second. 
so Theo just just ignore it okay guys ignore it ignore is the best thing uh, like usually I don't like to ban stuff I mean Andre you know you have to say your reason stop just repeating whatever you know just re stop repeating just that some library you know what, what's the point like what, what what do you want me to do about that I don't know that thing. I don't know uh, uh, that thing. So fire, f uh, fire and Zob. Fire hand Zob says IMS is an extremist. Yeah. Feel they feel they read is the best fringe operating system extremist. What is that? Okay, I don't know. I'm just starting to get into BSD. Okay. Webdog says, I want to see you browse <laughs> Hacker News and give your thoughts on what you see there. That would be interesting. <laughs> and the consequence would be, I would be swearing every minute. <laughs> yes, I was born in 1968, correct? SPA equals to single page application, okay? Uh, okay. Uh, Bartholomew says famous quote, 420, ignore is the best thing. Okay, what else, guys? So I think we wasted today's talk. I, <laughs> you know, we talked about Steve Jobs, that's, uh, you know, random chat, and Richard Stallman. That's another day of flaming the Unix people and the open source. That's, you know, that's old news. I don't look old. Well, but you get old. You know, I am, you know, your, 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 lots of things went bad. <laughs> Once you realize that beginning in early 40s, okay. Uh, for example, my, for example, I'm 51 and I cannot see, I cannot focus. You know, it just happens. Like you remember when you were a child, your grandma, you know, ask you to uh, put a thread in a needle. I, I do remember my grandma asked me to do that when I was like, I don't know, eight years old, you know. But now I can, I cannot see, I cannot see anything close. And, you know, yeah, it happens. Well, you know, it had, it, it's called aging. It happens to everyone. Um, you know, besides, besides your head going bald, you start to look ugly, uh, yeah. That's and that's an eternal problem of humanity. Everyone wishes to be young. So anyway, so that's that. Anything else? So flaming is never wasted. Flaming is never never wasted. Okay. So actually, I always I wanted to talk about some coding stuff. Okay. So I guess not today. Hacker News. Let's go to Hacker News. Okay, let's go to, let me sh tell you some story about Hacker News, okay. That's gonna be more swearing, you know, that's just be more of me swearing. Hacker News, Xali Og, and what is politics? Okay. And uh, the idiocy of hacker keyboards, you know, my site, my, you know, my name now and then went on to Hacker News every every two years or so. Some of my articles go went, you know, goes to Hacker News. Uh, about e about Lisp, my Lisp articles or my Emacs articles or my Emacs Lisp articles or my keyboard articles, or uh, sometimes programming related articles such as you know idioms and stuff. Uh, you are happy. You are still young. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Hacker News, Xali Org, and what is politics? You know, I don't use Hacker, Hacker News because I don't use Hacker News. I don't use Reddit. Well, actually, I do use Reddit, like you know, now and then now. But when it began in the first five years or ten years of Reddit, 
I don't use it, I, you know, because I know, you know, Redis began around 2004 or something like that, similar for Hacker News, because I know from these forums, online forums, that, that's their platform, you know, they, their sole purpose is to make money, is to squeeze money. Maybe now, maybe maybe not when they began, but eventually, you know, they, they just like Reddit. Uh, and Hacker News today is all like it's all social justice, okay? But anyway, Reddit, you know, and all these platforms, basically that's their, that's other people's stuff. Rather, what I want to do or you want to do is to create your own uh, websites. So you have opinion, put it on your own website and create a comment, you know, so people can comment it. That's discussion. Things like Hacker News, Reddit, Stack Overflow, you know, they are, they are, in a way, they are all a lie, okay? What, they, what, what are they about? You know, first of all, they are, they are all from the open source. They are all like, oh, we are the open source. We are the people. We, you know, we are the programmers. We are this or that. We help f humanity. Fuck! You know, but, <laughs> but in reality, they are just another co co corporation, okay? And and as a corporation in America, ultimately, what they want is to make money. And uh, hold on a second. And ultimately, this company do is to, you know, in order to make money, eventually, basically, they 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 it conflicts with the idea of open source. And it conflicts with many ideas of morality or uh, ethics. Okay. Not not always, but in a sense. Okay. Uh, in particular, they conflict with the idea of open source or free software. Okay. So the you so you have, you got this Stack Overflow. You got this. You got this Hacker News. You know. Uh, let's go to Hacker News. You know, let's see what they are today. I never, you know, I actually never went to Hacker News. Maybe not even once in a year. I the 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 times I went to Hacker News, like front front page, is about maybe <laughs> maybe once every three years. Typically, whenever my name is mentioned or my article is posted on Hacker News, I go there. Okay, but I almost never, you know, look look at what what's on Hacker News. Uh, except sometimes I saw it on Twitter, you know, when some some someone else shared it. So I never use Hacker News, and uh, so yeah. So back to these companies: Hacker News, Stack Overflow, uh, Stack Overflow, including GitHub, and also you know Reddit. They are all just companies seeing seeing you know fake news. Uh, yeah, we are open source and so on, you know, they get you to use them. Um, you know, and if you follow this news, for example, there are, there are so many controversies about each of these companies, like, you wouldn't know unless you follow them. I'm pretty sure some of you know some of these, like, uh, I'm pretty sure some of you follow reddit all the time you know even since their begin they, since, since since the beginning some of you follow hacker news you know since the beginning or some of you fact follow you know uh, stack overflow or github or you know and over the years over the past 10 by now 15 years you see many many controversies like oh they did you know some evil things they did uh you know but Pretty much all this news is that what happened is that after you know after a week nobody nobody remembers a thing you know like right now but you you know only those like you might remember all the things happened but nobody nobody knows like you cannot even start to write them out because because it takes a lot of time to you know you know to to uh, dig out all the information in the past. And, and or unless you block all the time, but even if I if you block such as I do, you know you don't I, like. For example, I, you know, it's it it takes tremendous amount of time to block, you know. Um, like usually I record things like a record of history of whatever 
things I see. For example, su suppose I saw some controversy of hacker news, uh, some extreme evil. Let's say I saw, let's say there's a news that hacker news sells all your data to all the companies, and there's proof, you know, leaked memo, leaked documentation from Paul Graham, things like that. Suppose I see that. I may not blog it, you know, because even if I blog it, I'll just say, okay, oh, I saw this news, you know, maybe there's a link, you know, by, 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 by next year, the link will be gone, will gone dead. <laughs> so it's like no use the, you know, if you really want to blog it, you have to spend one hour, two hours to get, you know, to, to actually archive in some sort of a way, you know, to, to explain what's going on. Okay. He, you know, usually these controversies, it's not easy. It's not like, one sentence summary. Usually, like this CEO did this, then it, that happens, then 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 you know who said what. You know, you have to spend like days to dig out all this information. Then you have to write it out. So it's not easy. It takes days to actually document one incident. So you know, occasionally when I see something, you know, I might just write one sentence, but that's not good enough. And even for each one sentence I wrote about these companies, you know, the, these controversy incidents, there are 10 that I didn't blog because you don't, you don't have time, you know, you don't follow each one, you know, you don't, you, you don't have time. So, so typically, you know, it's like they say history, the population has no memory. They say, you know, there's a phrase, the population has no memory, you know, whatever Google did bad, people don't remember. Young people don't know. You know, but you, you, it's hard to uh, communicate, you know, tell, to tell young people. Like today, if you tell young people, you know, all the things you know about Reddit, for example, all the bad things, controversy, you know, they, 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 they don't believe you. Like, you, you, you need to say, you, you know, you need to pro post proofs and explanations because otherwise they don't know. It's like it's like WikiLeaks, you know, WikiLeaks. They have produced tremendous tons of documentation, but but do you know actually what's really going on? You don't know. And you don't have time to read Wiki WikiLeaks. Do you actually go read what you know what WikiLeaks actually found out? No. Because they they are in a form that's not even readable. To understand them, you know, you need to know all the politicians. What you know, you you need to know all the politicians. What's their role? What's the international thing? You know, you need to know all that. Otherwise, it's like meaningless to you. All you hear is that oh, someone did bad. That that's you know, that's all you know. And you, so that's a that's a problem. So people don't know. Uh, and you know, we got all fake news, like fake news spread on Hacker News, for example, on Hacker News, uh, you know, all the idioms and bad information, misinformation about, for example, I talked about yesterday about currying, about monad, about lambda calculus, is this a lambda calculus? You know, they spread on Hacker News every day, <laughs> every day for the past 15 years. This crap information, idiotic, you know, and why? You know, okay, so for example, 784 points, 300 points, whatever, 300 points, 300 points, okay. Why? Because most people are not learned men, okay. Most people, they are, usually, and also most of them are young people. You know, young people, you don't have nothing to do. I mean, that's, this is actually true for young people. You know, you go to college, you don't, as opposed to older people, you have a life, you have family you need to take care of. You go to work, you have children, you, have, you know, you got things to do. You don't have time to go read Hacker News. You know, typically it's younger people uh, in college, you know, they don't do, have nothing to do. <laughs> and in general, young people are less, you know, they don't have experience, they don't have knowledge, comparatively speaking, that is true. And, and you know, 10 years older, 10 years after today, you will have more experience. You will know more than what you know now. You know, everyone grows older. So 10 years will come to you. 20 years will come to you. And when you think back, oh, 10 years ago, I don't know. I don't know nothing. But so most young people, you know, visit Hacker News and Reddit. So 
young people, like when I was young, you know, you don't know. You just like, oh, oh, you know, for example, when I saw lambda, you know, calculus. Oh, yeah, that's great article about lambda calculus. Why? Because I don't know nothing about lambda calculus. Uh, I don't know nothing about computer, you know, theoretical computer science. All I know is like, oh, this is, I heard on the Hacker News, this is actually a, you know, important thing. Lambda calculus, wow, it's so cool. You know, I like it, you know. And, but what I do not know is that maybe that article is like bad quality, you know. It's like you don't know what you're talking about, you know. So you use, so, and this is the general situation of humanity. It is not, uh, it's not something you actually can fix. Uh, and it's not something, it's not necessarily a problem. It's, you see, now remember, this is not necessarily like a problem or a bug. It's not. It's just, this is the way life is. You know, young people, older, and uh, misinformation in, in the world. Like even before, before internet, you know, today we have internet, the communication technology, you know, you, if you actually want to know the truth, you can find out. If you spend time, you can actually find out about ev every article, you know, every article you spend one hour to actually, you know, I want, for example, ra pick, randomly pick one article and spend one hour you know, try to find out what is true, what is whether, you know, like, like spend one hour to judge, like if you are going to, if, if you are a judge and you are going to score this article, like one to 100, what score you would give. And you have to spend one hour on it. Then you look, you, you know a lot, you learn a lot. <laughs> you know, so, uh, so what was I talking about? You know, so, um, so anyway, so there is a lot of, oh yeah, so I was saying this is not necessarily a problem or a bug, you know, because this is just how things are. And also consider if you compare, so today, you know, we have t internet and phones, you know, communication technology is very advanced. So you can actually find out truth about any of these articles or about political articles for example this one says this one says um okay united states court of appeals for the ninth circuit you know appeal from the united states says something 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 argued something something what is they talking about okay <laughs> i don't know you have to spend time to read it so it says ninth Ninth Circuit holds that scraping a public website does not violate the CFAA. Okay, anyway, that's a that's that's a political uh, topic. So today, what I was saying is that today, with all the technology, you can actually know the truth if you spend enough time on any issue. May it be you know Trump something Trump something social justice something incident or Hong Kong people, or China's incident, or Russia something something, or Middle East something something. You can actually know the truth. You, you just spend one day to do research. You can know, you can actually find out what you, um, whatever is your methodology, you can find the truth. That's today. But most people, you know, you don't, you don't, you, you know, because most people, you got other things to do. You gotta go play games, <laughs> you gotta go, uh, you know, do programming and stuff. That's why misinformation, in, misinformation spread. But even before internet technology, before the internet, let's say 20 years ago, misinformation uh, also spread, you know, um, but they kind of, uh, they spread slower, much slower than today. And in fact, in a sense, that's actually better than today. Because in some sense, you know, I'm not sure which is actually worse. Because before, when you do not have, you know, this internet communication technology, when there's the information, well, there's TV, okay? TV is the main source of misinformation, you know, propaganda. But, you know, things do not spread quickly. So if you don't watch TV, you know, you cannot 
easily spread misinformation back then. So information doesn't spread quickly. Doesn't matter it's good information or bad. Doesn't spread quickly. So it tends to be local localized. You know, it's just regional localized. But now with communication technology, you can know so much. You can know like you are bombarded with information. But the thing is, most people do not really care about truth. They just you know they sit they sit you know at home they read Twitter. Uh, they just they hear what they like to hear, you know, like oh Unix, oh Unix is great, oh <laughs> you know, oh Denise Ritchie died and uh, Steve Jobs is bad, you know, <laughs> oh yeah that's great, you know, then you, you don't do no research, that that's it, you 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 retreat it, you know, Steve Jobs died, oh but but Denise Ritchie, you know, the, the Unix founder died, nobody knows, that's so that's injustice, you just retreated it, you share it. So that's how misinformation spread. You don't spend the time. Even today, you can know the truth. You can think, but you don't. So I think, in a, I think, you know, today the situation may be worse. You know, I don't know actually it's, it's worse or better. It, it actually may be worse. Okay, so anyway, that's, that's about my take on these uh, corporations. You know, and also, you know what is Hacker News about? Hacker News, you know, as you know, it started by Paul Graham, the Y Combinator. By the way, this page is written. This Hacker News is written in Arc Lisp. Arc Lisp, it's a new Lisp language invented by Paul Graham. Okay, which nobody uses except you know a few handful of people. So this is written in Arc Lisp. So that's that's something interesting uh, with respect to tech, and also Hacker News. The Hacker News page is if you look at the. Let me show you the. Uh, okay, so today actually, let me show you the source code. Um, more tools. Okay. Um, Developer tools. I want to show you the source code, okay? It used to be control U or command U to show the source code, but now you know things changed. Uh, that command is no longer hold on a second. Okay, view view source. Okay, so if you look at the source code of Hacker News, oh, they improved. Okay, so <laughs> they improved. Okay, let's copy the whole page. Copy it. Wait, this is this is what year? This is uh. 2016. So open, open a new buffer, paste it, save it, xx.html, and uh, and let's look at the code. Okay, yeah. So if you look at the Hacker News uh, source code, you can see this is like 1990. This is HTML 1999. Okay, Hacker News is still using HTML like 1999. Well, they actually improved a lot. Um, you see font. You see this font ta tag. That's 1999's HTML. They actually improved a lot. Uh, so this page we are looking at is from 19 from 2006. So they actually started to use spam. You see st spam and class. Uh, class, you know, class. So spam head. So those are you know CSS. But so this is so sometimes before two thousand sixteen, they they did some improvement. But still, still you can see the font tag. It, before that, you know, before two thousand sixteen, sometimes before. It's all font ta tag, you know. Every everything is font, font family, font size on every element. 
and also the whole page is a table let's see uh, you see you see this TR let me show you you see this TR TR is a row TD is a, a column cell and table you see the whole page is a table and that is 1999 style of HTML so hacker news you know they program him. I suppose originally this is this is written by Paul Graham so they are still like from 1999 uh, for example let me show you Sali hacker news HTML okay I documented so here this page this page and this page let me open that so HTML style 1999 hacker news so this I wrote in 2003 so you can see in 2003 uh, their page is still very you know very 1999 they don't use they don't use class they don't use CSS class you see they are they are still using style uh, or inline styles no class so this is back in 2003 so be, between 2003 and 2016 they 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 improved and you know Paul Graham Paul Graham's website they are still using image maps <laughs> this is quite funny image maps that's you know this is again 2000 you know 1999 HTML tag anyway uh, let's see what is this hacker news traffic effect uh, okay anyway so what else guys any 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 other comments so yeah webdoc says I remember image maps medium too yeah medium you know medium is quite funny because medium began medium began around 2006 was it 2006 2005 medium you see by by 2005 blogging is all dead you know there's no more blogging but all of a sudden you know medium becomes very popular I was quite surprised you know so I looked into you know like blogging has been dead for many years for for a decade you know nobody is blogging anymore but all of a sudden around 2016 or 2015 or was it 2017 I've, I forgot medium becomes very popular and it's you know it's it's a blog basically a, a blogging platform you know I was so I was quite surprised so I looked into it turns out you know medium became popular because the the people who created medium are from are the same people who created Twitter they are these type of people so called um, serial, uh, serial ent entrepreneurs okay that, that's kind of their jargon you know meaning that they just do startups one after another you know they uh, they are you know they are so rich you know they, this is their becomes their thing you know they just do start startups every few years they just do you know lots of startups so so they are from they are by the people you know one or two guys from the Twitter who originally did the Twitter so they have connection you know they have connection they have you know connection to Twitter and all the money and they know you know what to do so that's how medium became popular and media is one of the evil you know crap they they have they track they track your you know when when you pause and they do everything they, they do nasty things and also medium is very strongly social justice affiliated very strongly like I remember I you know usually when this uh, site come up often I, I go and log in you know I create an account just to look at them you know see what they are like so I I, I, I noticed medium when you log in it's all social justice articles like oh women this that oh you know this that heavily uh, social justice um, inclined anything else guys so we've been talking for one hour and 75 minutes 
So I don't know if it's good or bad. It's like random chat and rant about companies. Uh, I you know, I'm not sure about that because I rather I rather do coding and you know something more. Um, uh, something more solid, you know, things like that. Close that, copy that, close it back to Emacs. Paste it, linkify, <coughs> show in browser, back to Chrome, close it, uh, Hacker News, close this source code, go back here. So this is one of my article on ha Hacker News, the idiocy of hacker keyboards, indeed. So that's about keyboard, I'm not sure we, uh, we want to talk about that. If you want, if you guys want me to, you know, just say it. You, you comment. You have to comment. Then we talk about that. Uh, I think that we're gonna shut down in five minutes. Yeah, we should, because it's already like eighty minutes. So Bethany says I created an account on Medium in the beginning when it came out. Then I logged in, logged out, never logged in again. Yeah. I still, I still have a Medium. I never post, uh, let's see, Xali Medium. Uh, okay, Medium Xali. Let's see if I can find that. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> okay. Did I ever post something? Medium Xali. You know, there's another thing. Let's talk about that. Okay, there is another thing. You see, you see this sign in, uh, sign into Medium with Google. This fuck, this open source scums, open source and free software foundation scumbags, hypocrites. Let me tell you the story about login. Okay. Now, in the 1990s to, to, to early 2000s, you have login. Each website has a login, starting beginning uh, with slash dot. Now, slash dot is the oldest uh, website for online discussion forums. Slash dot is kind of a news, news aggregate. You know, they post news like 10 or 20 news every day and you can comment on it kind of like reddit and hacker news okay slash slash dot is the oldest uh, back in it began in 1999 i think and uh, for 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 one year i was reading slash dot every day uh, slash dot is the maker of the unix <laughs> the unix fan okay every every day the unix people they love it slash dot and anti Microsoft. But you know, now it's twenty years, you know, the owner changed hand. The or even the original uh coders they they they, they, they moved on. They they moved on like five to ten years ago, long ago. The you know Commander Taco and uh, you know three guys, two or three guys, they, they, they moved on. Uh, and the company has changed owners several times. So it's, you know, it's a, just a business. It's a commercial, you know, uh, behind you have the big boss with billions or millions of money, dollars. They cooking these things, you know, you, you don't know, you know, you don't know who is running it. You, you, you as a nerd, as a geek, uh, as a geek, you are just a small guy, you know, thinking, oh, this is great side, you know, things like that. Just same thing with Hacker News. Hacker News and uh, Reddit, you know, you don't know who is running behind it, things like that. Uh, that's why I don't support, I, I never liked any of these. You know, you want you want power to the people, you know, like like the free software ideal or open source ideal. Power to the people, not the corporations. All these corporations, they are just, they are just a facade, they are just a front end, a face. They are just selling. They, they 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 are just there to make money. That is all they do. And the Richard Stallman today, what he do? Well, he's not here to make money, but rather he's here to sell his ideology. He don't really actually care about 
the real uh, goodness of society. He don't care. He only care about he he sell his e ideology that his e ideology becomes successful. That's what he cares. Richard Stallman. And same thing with the open source fanatics. You know, you don't really care about whether something is good for the people, you know, all the people in the world. You, you just care that uh, open source succeeds because that's your, uh, you know, religion. So anyways, slash dot. Uh, so what was I going to talk about? Yeah, I was talking about the login system. Like, <laughs> I'm going to give you a glimpse, a survey of the login system in the past 20 years. Okay, so in 1999, you have you, you begin to have the login system. You know, you have a website, people can log in, and uh, and by the way, login system is kind of like um, it's rather is kind of the thing that has to do with commercialization, because once you have a lo login, that's one of the way to make more money, and it's also one of the way to keep keep your audience. You know, keep your website popular. One of the way to make your website very popular, and 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 also eventually, it's one of the way to gather user data to sell 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 the data, like Google, Facebook, Twitter, they are doing. So login system. First, first of all, it's you know this the very idea of login. You you go to a website, you have to log in. It's actually tied to making money. Okay. Partly, okay, not not all, but but it has a lot to do with making money, growing your site, you know, marketing things like that. It has less to do with with um, it has less to do with benefiting your users. Well, for 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 a um, web store like Amazon, then it's necessary, you know, when you have a web store, it's a it's kind of it's necessary. Uh, okay, so so we are talking about login system. Okay, so in in nineteen ninety nine you have login system. Now as time goes by, after five years, in in let's say two thousand five, let's say two thousand five to two thousand ten, there is a problem. You have so many websites. You know the web. You know the internet grows and grow. You know it's like almost exponentially. So basically, now each person, you go to the internet, you have 10, 20 websites, you have to remember the login key, you know, each one you need a login and password. So that becomes a problem. And uh, there are many solutions throughout the years. One solution is basically the browser or the operating system like a Mac, they provide a master key password database. So basically, like on the Mac, for example, you log in one time using your Mac password. Then you have a database that stores all the password and login for all the website you visit. So that's one way to solve it. Okay, that, that's you know since Apple, Apple, I think Apple, Apple is the first one to do that. Then Microsoft also do that. Linux also do that. Okay, that's one way. Another way you know, is browser. You know, browser also also start to do that. I, I, I forgot which one came first. But anyway, browser, same idea. For example, if I use Google Chrome, Google Chrome has a master uh, password database, you know. So it remembers all the website you visit, the login and password, it can remember. So you only remember one login for Google uh, browser, you know. So, you, you, you know, that's Google, Google does that. Okay, so that's one solution. Uh, OS or browser, but but then the web developers they begin to realize the idea called Open ID. Okay, uh, you guys remember that Open ID? Uh, basically, it's dead. Okay, it's a dead technology. You see that logo? So Open ID came along. The idea is that okay, in, you know. We want to. We need to solve the problem where each person has to remember tens of passwords. So they they created this open ID. The idea is, you know, everyone uh, can use one single password and login password. 
just one single login password pair for all sites. And basically, for the so if you are uh, the website, you can implement Open ID. So I think this is a distributed system, decentralized. Yes. So basically, all the website they will use Open ID. So. So anyway, so OpenID is a kind of the solution, you know, it's a solution cooked up by open source fans or free software fans, you know, they, they cooked up with this system. So you only, each user only remember one pair of login password. But each website can implement, you know, use the OpenID system, so they are distributed so that, so it works, you know, so one, one password for all websites. So that's the beginning, but it failed. Basically, it failed after you know for 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 a year or two, for three years, it became very popular, but it failed. So Open ID is is like one chapter of the logging thing on the web. Now there's another thing. Another thing. Let me t you know at, at the at one point when Open ID was you know was everywhere popular you know all the programmers like fashionable or not, like like on hacker news and reddit they talk about all day like you'll see oh oh oh, oh you know oh new system open id distributed oh everyone is like 1000 points you know three three million points the fucking uh, programmers uh it's all it's all just um anyway that's the idea of open id the idea is not bad okay uh, you know, but what people don't realize is usually there are a lot of things behind it. You know, for example, the o Open ID organization, uh, these standard, so supposedly standard organizations, typically they are not, they are not, you know, the ideal good people. They don't, you know, they don't want no money. They just want to for the good of society. That's not true. Okay, usually when you look into th things. Then you realize, you know, the people who created this standard, you know, the open ID or whatever. Uh, usually, okay, often it's a case. You you start to find that they they are just greedy. You know, they they have this standard. They want to do all things possible so that they can squeeze money out of it. That that is basically what's going on with all these open source fuckheads. Uh, but anyway, so open open ID died. But but back back then, you can see, you know, oh, you know, Google says, uh, you know, Google is a board member. Yeah, yeah. There you go, board members. You have to pay. You have to pay to to be a board member. Uh, probably okay. I'm not I'm not sure about details. I'm talking about general. You you can always look into the details yourself. But anyway, you you so you have board uh, members, corporate board members, Google. Microsoft, uh, Oracle, yeah, the big companies. Semantic is evil. They doing semantic. They 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 do fake certificates, fake it, you know, uh, H, uh, SSL certificates. You know, the Google they are fighting with Google because Google was blaming blam blaming semantics. They they churn out you know, fake uh, certificates because you know bad guys or uh, c uh, government pay them, you know, semantic. They are doing fake fake certificates. VMware, Verizon, you know, all these giants. Uh, anyway, so OpenID failed. But anyway, uh, another p so OpenID is one chapter of the online login. Then there's another thing, which is, which is you see here on Medium. You see it says sign into Medium, uh, dot com using Google with Google okay so what so this idea is that most people most vast majority of people you have you already have a Google account or Facebook account you know with these big online companies so the idea is that you can so Google and Facebook they create a system similar similar to open ID except it's not distributed you know it's just their own so Google created a system so that Google made their login, you know, their password login system so that, you know, they made an API so that other websites can use it. So for example, if I run Medium, 
you know, I when I need the password login, I can I can make it so that I can use Google's API. So users can just log in with Google, uh, Google's, you know, login. So that's a thing. You know, uh, so that's you know, Google does that. Of course, it it uh, gives more power to Google. You know, whoever has more, you know, login users, basically you got you have more power. So everyone wants that. So Google wants is doing that. Google encourages all the website, other website to use, you know, their login system, and Facebook, you know, wants to grow their, you know, popularity. So Facebook has their own, you know, login with Facebook, and you also, I think you also have login with Twitter. I'm not sure, but anyway, that's the story. Okay, but there's a twist after, you know, this is bad enough. Well, it, it's. On what it's so bad or not, it's you, you can judge that, okay. But then later on, there's a trick, twist, okay. After a few years of this, then today's website, you know, like today, you uh, if you go to some website, you you will see, I'm not sure that's the case with Medium, but you will see this, you know, sign in with Google, okay. So suppose you type in your Google account login password, okay, you signed in, but but after that, they they still ask you. They still ask you to create a new account name and password for their website. You see. So this is like this is like scum, you know. So so why are you asking me for my Google account password anymore? You see. So the point here. So the situation is that they ask you to type your Google. Uh, account name and password, not for the purpose of, you know, making you using one account, you know, convenience, convenience to the users. No, that's not the case. Because after that, after they ask that, they they ask you to create a username and password to sign into the account. You see. So so why are they asking your Google uh, name and password? Because that way. They are gathering extra information, so they are they they not only require you to create an account for 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 their website. They only they also have a, a extra information. They now know your Google's you know password and uh, you know login, so they can connect you know data and sell more information. This fuck this extremely fucking uh, all this op the all the all open source fuckheads. You know, all these website, mass, mass majority of them are like they have a code of conduct. We are good for the, you know, we are, uh, we respect our users' privacy. Fuck. And and one particular website I remember doing this is um, is the um, picture website for women. You know, the Pinter Pinterest. Okay, I remember that Pinterest. All all the website are doing that. You know, like. If you are a programmer like me, then you know. But most people don't know. Like most average people, people they don't know nothing about programming. You know, they just they see this website. Oh, I like I like Pinterest. You know, I like to see all these pictures. So they log in. They they say they see. Oh, type your Google. So they type it. You know, password and account. And they say they see. Oh, oh, oh. You need to create an account. Then just they just type it. You know, they don't know nothing. But if you are a programmer, you guys know just as I do. You know this. What, why are they doing that? Because they are becoming so evil. These fucks. <clears> hey, <throat> good morning, Justin. Okay, so actually we are about to end. Yeah, that's the end of it, actually. <laughs> so today's whole talk is basically rent. Um, Okay, so let me write down, write down just what we just talked about. The last item, open ID, and uh, and uh, Google login. Uh, open ID and using Google login, and a short account of the history of web login. Okay, so today we talked about. This other topic we talked about is basically all rent. It's like random chat. So Richard Stallman and on Steve Jobs' death, 
death, death of Steve Jobs and Denise Ritchie and, and uh, John McCarthy and, and mathematicians. Okay, my personal photos of Steve Jobs uh, and we talked about Hacker News, Reddit, how evil they are. Uh, we talked about Hacker News traffic effect. Oh, that one we didn't talk about. So that, actually that one is not too important. Uh, then we talked about open ID, Google logging, and a short account of the history of web logging. Uh, basically, it's all today's talk, like uh, how long we've been talking, 90 minutes is all rent against, against these corporations and against open source and free software foundation ideology. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. So anything else comment? We shut in we shut down in one minute. Google has a hash for every person in the world. Yeah, you bet. I mean not just that. You Google has your entire your entire life story, including your photos, your you know <laughs> like when did you fuck your wife <laughs> in their database? And you know, even if you did, even if you didn't take take selfies of that, they know they can guess. They can guess fairly accurately if you use Google services. Uh, so SQRL. So what is SQRL? Secure and quick, reliable logging. I don't trust those. You know, a lot of you geeks. You know. You probably say, you know, like come up with uh, technical solutions like, oh, something new distributed and, and cryptographic, you know, encrypted. So this SQRL is secure, quick, reliable logging is a draft open source standard for secure web logging. I don't think it'll go, it'll work, you know, all this, it, the problem is not technology, okay. You know, most most you know people in Silicon Valley, they they are programmer idiots. You know, or basically programmers don't know nothing about actual how the world works. But they think they do. They think they are the engineer. They think they see the world, you know, as mathematics. They think they know so much. They think we are going to have a utopia. You know, today's all these bad situations we talk about. Where they came from? They came from programmers, basically. They came from these tech heads. You know, programmers think they know. I think programmers are the worst. So, you know, programmer solution, you always have, you know, oh, you know, we're going to have new distributed system, distributed system or in cri cryptocurrency or whatever. It's going to solve the problem. No, it's not. So it, we, we are doing this for the past 20 years. All the nerds, all the nerds, even before me, okay, well, you know, are you know, are, are are chanting these kind of things. We've been doing this for twenty years. It's going nowhere, it's, and in fact, it's going worse. So, what is the solution? The solution is not about new, you know, spy versus spy. Okay, so <laughs> let me show you this article. Uh, actually, there is an article: Hacker News, Saudi Org, and what is politics? And. Uh, uh, you know, it's like spy versus spy. There it is. You know, that's that's the tech geeker. That's nerd's solution to to the spammers. To <laughs> you know, it's like I'm gonna create some new technology that's gonna thwart you, and the bad guy is gonna create new some new other technology that's gonna reverse trap you. You know, that's spy versus spy. You know, like the spammers, then then the geek, the nerds have, you know, um, filters, kill file. You know, those those all, 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 all the the fucking the from Paul Graham, the Paul Graham fucking idiot. There's a statistical term. Uh, uh, stati statistical term for filtering email spam. What's the name? That like there's a stit uh, jargon from statistics. Uh, let's uh, search for email, okay. You 
you know, uh, Paul Graham for a period of time for one for one year or so. He's like he is champion championing uh, this email spam filter he just wrote. Like um, you know, there's a jargon, uh, some statistical jargon. Anyone remember? So anyway, programmer, typical programmer, nerds, or you, you know, underground, your old 4chan type of people, their reaction is that, oh, we're going to use cryptocurrency, we're going to use, we're going to create distributed system. That's, that's, you know, that's been going on for 20 years. And where are you? You are still, you are becoming niche and more niche. <laughs> and Google and Facebook and Microsoft, they are becoming more and more powerful. Look at, like, today we talked about Microsoft example. They are now the great, more, actually, I, you know, two years ago I checked, they are actually bigger than Google in terms of, uh, I think, in terms of net income or revenue. Microsoft, okay, you, although you don't hear it much, you know, you, you, you cannot judge, judge things from what you hear on Hacker News. I mean, if you really want to know, you mean, I, I looked, you know, you, you go to Wikipedia, look at their uh, net income or, uh, or, the, or the, 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 the gross income, you know, or, or the money transaction. I think two years ago I checked, Microsoft is still bigger than Google. Even though we tend to think Google is bigger, you know. But anyway, so you see, look, look at what happened today. After 20 years, Microsoft is even bigger than bigger, far more bigger. And then, then you have Google doing censorship, all that censorship. And they are all social justice. Fuck, they are all not social justice. And now you have code of conduct, which is a kind of a political uh, documentation so that they can, they can um, you know, they can hit you anytime they want. Whenever you know they don't like you, they can pick you up and erase you. That's what the code conduct is about. So that's what happens to to the society. And 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 you guys open source fuck open source every day. You know I have my I have lots of friends. Not you know not not just you guys, but generally you know because I'm in open source. Basically most or vast majority of my followers. You know, they are still chanting open source in, in free software, you know, they chanting about it every day. It's like democracy, you know, to the point today, you really don't know what it means anymore. It's just a chant. Democracy, democracy, yeah, oh, we, we must have democracy. We must have open source. You don't know what it means anymore. So what is the solution? So the solution is you want to you want to get people to think, you know, like Bertrand Russell and many great philosophers philosophers has said about this. You want the people to actually think about things. <coughs> or in other words, awareness or education, okay? Education, awareness or thinking, you know, you want to people to be free thinkers, to think about things. And that, you know, that seems to be going away, you know, it's in, a, in the past 10 years or so, it's going away. Yeah, exactly. Code, so Justin says code of conduct means you can exclude people you don't like or you don't like their politics or religion. Code, conduct, code of conduct is extremely evil okay i have so many i have a lot of story to tell because i've looked into many you know they they are people you know like i mentioned before you know if i talk about this this is gonna be a topic about social justice scan they they they, they are so much evil because they are people you know the whole thing the entirety of social justice movement, their philosophy. I mentioned this before. The entirety. I, I've studied this for for the past in the past four years. I spent about one hour studying in detail. Academia. In academia, in philosophy, in postmodernism, you know, I looked their origin and also people, the social just justice people. 
on Twitter, you know, or elsewhere. I look at, you know, what they do. You know, I, I, I've been studying this for last, for the past four years. They are, they are just extremely evil, okay. Uh, without going detailed, into detail, that's what I say. But, but that topic is, itself is going to be ours. And code of conduct is just, um, any, anyway, that's, it's, it's just uh, extreme evil, okay. It, it, it's, extreme evil is not uh, descriptive enough because that's so general. What do you mean extreme evil? Code of conduct is a kind of a uh, kind of a weapon, okay? You know, like today you say weaponized something. You know, you weapon, you know, today people say weaponized uh, weaponized sex, for example, weaponized gun control issues, weaponized, you know, uh, abortion issues, you know, that's what they say, that, that's a term. But uh, code of conduct, so yeah, indeed, it's kind of a, it's, simp it's just a weapon, you know, I don't like to use that phrase because that's kind of like, it, it's, it's, just, it's just a method, it, it, it's a method specifically created by certain very uh, intentionally evil person, not not innocently, you know, people like, you know, people who simply be believed in something and turns out they are wrong. Not those. I, you know, it's, it, it's by certain people who are intentionally trying to do bad, trying to uh, make themselves more powerful. They created code of conduct, okay? It's very exact. Code con of conduct, you know, you, you look into, you know, the, the, their formation, you know, wh why they, they create such, uh, you know, docu doc document and not just the writing style. I'm not talking about just the writing style. The, I mean, even more, more fundamental. The, so what I'm saying is that code of conduct is a document that is intentionally intentionally created by by bad people, okay? By intentionally bad people, so that they be, can become more powerful as a weapon, as, as some kind of a system, so that they can uh, they can they can uh, you know they can damage, you know, put you in jail or fire you, things like that, any people they don't like. That's, that's my opinion about code of conduct. You know, that's a big topic. I can go, I can go on for one hour about that with, you know, with stories and websites and details and the person. There's one specific person, a girl, a, a woman who created that code of conduct. There's one specific person, okay? And I can, t I can, get, I can tell you her history. You know, you can look at what she has done. It's a fucking ass, okay, those people. I mean, you, you, you look at their history, you know, it, they are not, you know, they, they have a history of uh, uh, bad things. Okay, that, that's it for today. Uh, thank you guys for watching. That's, that's like uh, 100 minutes of rent, almost two, two hours of rent. Okay, 30 minutes. I'm going to shut in down 30 minutes in 30 minutes. Uh, just live in the woods. Live in the woods. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, that's what I mean. Uh, skira. Uh, skira. Skira cell, but I don't want to post that whatever you wrote because Google is going to censor me, you know. Anyway, bye guys.